Roman Tomasz Alois Jaworski was a Polish writer and dramatist, known as a promoter of modernism in Polish literature. Born in 1883 in the Ukrainian city of Klitsko, the son of Franciszek Jaworski and Maria Bienkowska, he was educated in the K und K Kronprinz Rudolf Gymnasium in Brody, before moving on to study at the University of Lviv and the Jagiellonian University in Krakow. Following a Eurasian-African tour, he worked as a French teacher and private tutor of children in the Lubomirsky princely family. In 1909, he married Stefania Klementsiewicz, but the marriage would end in divorce due to Jaworski's gambling habits. Jaworski contributed to the Lviv Daily newspaper in 1913, then following the outbreak of World War I, he moved to Vienna to write for the Vienna Polish career. Jaworski became paralyzed in 1939 and died in 1944 in Gora Calvaria. He published his first article in 1903 and his first book, the collection The History of Maniacs, was published in 1910. His only other published work seems to have been his 1925, The Marriage of the Count Orgas, which we shall be taking a look at today. And here I must make a stand. Whatever the author's countrymen may say, this is not a good book. Essentially, it concerns a confrontation between two American billionaires, named Yetmeyer and Havermeyer, each trying to take control over the restructuring of European culture following the end of World War I. Yetmeyer wants to rejuvenate it via a resurrection of religious feeling generated by a dancing theatre ballet establishment he builds in Toledo in the house once occupied by Cervantes. Meanwhile, Havermeyer is buying up all the artistic masterpieces of history and secretly transporting them into his ice palace, built on a private island in Franz Josef Land in Russia, where he intends to have them all destroyed upon his death to purposefully wipe away all remnants of old culture. However, Yetmeyer has his own hidden agenda and invites Havermeyer to his dancing establishment, where he prepared a special room for him, one where every single article of furniture is an ingenious mechanism designed to torture or kill anyone trying to use it. His intention is to cast Havermeyer into the lead role of a ballet he had envisioned, inspired by El Greco's The Burial of the Count of Orgas, and to then kill him as part of the grand finale. The ballet is overseen by a Ukrainian devoted to Satan who eats children, and the lead female role is taken up by a necrophilic, illiterate Spanish noblewoman who had fallen in love with the bull that had killed her matador fiancé. However, as promising as all that sounds, it only features in the book in a very marginal fashion. Yavorsky doesn't want to actually tell a story, he wants to show off as an artiste, as a high brain modernist, writing a many faceted, absurdist satire. And so the little bit of actually interesting plot is swamped and swallowed up whole in a lumbering, molasses like tidal wave of would be deep and would be groundbreaking philosophical claptrap, where each character's ever so minute movement or action of any sort is an excuse for Jaworski to write a page of disjointed nonsense where we are told activity A has its origin in activity B, committed by people C, from entirely self-defeating and self-refuting reasons, which make no sense and have no relation to the thing that actually caused this tidal wave of Latin quotations, French exclamations, and lengthy citations from entomological and botanical textbooks. The author, aside from showing off the fact he had bought a set of encyclopedias and foreign dictionaries, has no other goal but to constantly grind all progression to a halt, so you constantly have dozens of pages where absolutely nothing happens. The little plot there is would never manage to reach 500 pages in the Polish original otherwise. The climax of the novel, with Havermeyer's death, 
and the detonation of his private island is weak, almost anemic, and the fact that practically the entirety of the world's artistic heritage was destroyed is literally ignored by everyone. The novel ends with a letter from a Polish count, probably a stand-in for the author, waffling on about the definition of love for a few pages. Seeing that this was a very incidental character who barely showed up, and had no influence on the plot whatsoever, I have no idea why he is being used to bookend the novel. The worst thing about all this is that there are spots in the novel where the silly names of characters and their actions make you think that Yavorsky thought he was being very funny, yet he was being anything but. Whether it is the part where the thigh minister claims he doesn't have a name, and his personal documentation consists of a parasol, or a flying competition where 13 planes carry corpses on board to compete for the title of Flying Turtle, none of this is funny, and a satire that doesn't make you laugh even once is probably the most embarrassing thing there is. I have to repeat, this is not a good book. I had to actively force myself to finish it, and I suffered the whole way through. I don't recommend this to anyone. Reading 400 plus pages of the author luxuriating in his own erudition and philosophical prowess, by choice, would be nothing short of advanced masochism.